I had, I had a really good feeling I was going to be as deep as we've been, and that hasn't disappointed me. I'm right where I thought we'd be. Is there a way to say if you had a game tomorrow, where you're going up? Nope. Not yet. I can tell you the competition is unbelievable. I think if there's four tackles that would start anywhere in this league and in a lot of places that I have the benefit of having four. All right, the inside guys, Harry Miller's been unbelievable. Josh Myers is becoming a great player, working his tail off. His attention to detail is unbelievable. He's becoming exactly what I thought he would become. Where are you guys from a leadership standpoint? I mean, I know the offensive line tends to provide that for a team, You're right. but you've got some inexperience and the experience there. There's no doubt. We're, we're not, we're not uh, out in the forefront right now in that category in the offense. You're right. That's a great point. Right now, and I enjoy that. I don't want them to feel like they have to do that. I want them to feel like they have to do their job right now. Become the best at doing your job. And when you do that and you start performing, as it goes on, those leaderships will come. And so I'm just worried about them doing their job, focusing on what they have to do to get better every day, and work hard and practice, and that's what they're doing. I think Josh talked in the spring about looking forward to becoming more of a leader, so he had to maybe make sure he stays focused on himself. Yeah, he is, he, and he's doing that a little bit, but he's still, he's still trying to focus on his job. I don't have a guy with a lot of game experience. And so they have to get that experience every day. We have to create those atmospheres at practice. Focus on that. The leadership stuff will come. Can you go into the season playing multiple guys yep. in one or more positions? I believe so. What have you said? Uh, possibly, yeah. So it's, it's definitely a possibility. What have you liked from uh, Jim Jackson? Uh, I'll tell you, there's a guy that is absolutely, you talk about a guy that provides leadership without saying a word. Now, obviously he's a new guy. Guys are just getting to know him. He's on our team, but he is professional. That's what that's how I like the term. He doesn't say a word. He does his job. He goes hard every play he's in there and then goes back in and does it again. So he's starting to lead by example. We've only been in pads two days. Running around in underwear does nothing. It means nothing. All right. So we've had two practices in pads where they can show who they are now. And when people watch the film and they see how you perform and they see how you finish and they see how you do the things that we look for, that's when leaders pop up. Greg Great Mayer missed uh, the spring and, and had to, to go through that rehabilitation. How has he uh, shown up so far in the fall, and, and where do you expect him to take a jump? I think he's done really good with his weight. He's 313. He looks like a million bucks, and that's going to take some of the stress off his back. Uh, but right now, he's obviously, we're limiting him until he gets back into the swing of things. you got to remember, Jonah and Thayer haven't been in pads since November. They haven't had a full go practice and been in pads since last November. So for those guys knocking the dust off and getting them going, that's going to come every day we practice, every day we have pads and those things. But Thayer looks really good. Greg, when you think about the, the depth you guys have now, what came back from last year, what's coming down the pipe of the recruiting class you guys have committed? Like, oh, man. The state of your position group, how, how do you feel about it compared to basically your entire career? Like, is this as good as it's been? Ever. As good as ever. Right? You're, that's a great question. You're exactly right because really you're going to have Jonah leave and Bowen leave and Albie leave. And then look what's coming in and look what's backing up. I'll tell you right now, if you're watching, uh, I don't know how much you've been out there, but you've watched Harry Miller perform with the twos against our defense as a true freshman. Enoch came in here at 270. He's 295 right now. And wow, does he look like a million bucks. And there, or uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Dewan Jones, uh, you can't miss him. He's as big as a house. And he, and he runs around at 375 pounds, runs around like an athletic guy. And those guys, I can't even get in the twos to get reps right now. So yeah, and then with the guys coming in, I'm so excited about those guys. Yes, it's absolutely awesome, but that's how it should be. That's how it should be. You should have athletic young cats that are ready to go take over and take over. We had that lapse where a lot of those guys that were here before that, those guys are gone now. We're building that depth to be exactly where it should be at Ohio State. It's a great question. When you talk about rotations on the offensive line, mm -hmm. are you more apt to rotate guys into certain positions or rotate because you have so much depth? All five guys into yeah, two that, offensive lines. You're exactly right. And that's what, if you go back to last year, the first couple games of the year, first, you know, Oregon State was, I think, 21 nothing. The first drive of the second quarter, Coach Dace said, let's get the twos in there. That's awesome. Hey, let's put those kids in there. That's how development occurs. Out here, yes, we can get you so far, but they have to go out there and game do it. And so you're right. Sometimes maybe it's a guy, or sometimes maybe a guy's banged up as the year goes on. You 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 limit his play. Say he's got 30 pitch count. Get him out and let the other guy play. So it could be singular, and it could be like Coach Day likes to do. They start get the second group in. Then let's go see how they do. That's awesome. You mentioned what, how early it is. Why? What? What has made Harry Miller already with the team? What has gotten? Him? I just think he's so far ahead mentally. You know that that's the biggest thing for those young kids. Okay, and especially the center. 
but the other two guys haven't had as much, you know, Harry being center and Harry being Harry. He was just, he, he learns. Oh, coach, tell me some more, feed me some more. And like I said, we did all those iPad sessions with him FaceTiming because he knew he was coming into center. And so he's so far ahead mentally, he's out there making the checks today. And let's pick up Barry that I don't think I've ever had a freshman do, ever. Do you think he could get to the point this season where your backup center isn't Jonah Jackson, it's Harry Miller, that yes, type of thing? that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping it's not Matt Jones. I'm hoping it's not... Jonah Jackson, I'm hoping it's not Gavin Cuff who's snapping now. All for precautionary reasons, because you know, I'm hoping by the time we get that first game, hey, Harry's the backup coach. If something happens or Josh gets something, get out and get in there, and the kid can do it. With the fit that you have, what can the offense do at the close of the other side line? Oh, I'm telling you, it's a lot more. You can, you're, you're a lot more wide open. You don't have to have a different plan when a guy comes in. You know, hey, we got to tackle it. You got to protect this. We're not going to have to do that. And that you're right. That allows the play caller not to have to think about, hey, where's the weak spot? How do we protect that guy? It's a big difference. All the new quarterback this year. How is it developing chemistry? With them? And you know, you have different styles and everything. Yeah, those guys are all different. What they do is different. No, you know, it's back like. Last year, some of the stuff we did before and had done in the past wasn't available because of what Dwayne was. Now we're back to where there's a lot more stuff open, so you got different guys, so it puts a little more on us because each quarterback has different things he can do, so we have to learn more. But the good thing is we're deep, we got smart guys. Coach Wyatt Davis, just what did, uh, how's he carried over what happened at the end of last season for him? And I'm, I'm is he ready? Or what, oh my gosh. How do you look at him? He is. I, I tell you, I love the kid. Mm -hmm. if, if there was somebody and I had my park, my car parked at night and was walking out of a bar late. <laughs> I'd be like, Wyatt, are you here? And I'd feel comfortable getting to my car. That's how much I think of him. He is a fighter. He, he is a technician. He is a perfectionist. He wants to do it perfect. And if he doesn't, he, he, he drove a guy down the field six yards the other day and turned around and he's kind of like, like that. Like, What's wrong? Coach, I didn't step in love. I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. You just love to coach those kids because they love playing the game of football. How about Nick Petit Ferrer? What's he showing you guys? You mentioned four tackles. I assume he's in that group. Yes, sir. He's one of them. There's no doubt. He's now 295 or 97. And mm -hmm. like I said, that was the thing last year. We had to get his weight up. That was a bit of a struggle at times to get him up to where he needed to be. He's there now. He's, I mean, his every single lift he had in the weight room with Mick is, is up 20 to 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. So he's big and strong and physical now. He's had the time under to learn the position, and now he's starting to take off. There so, you go, Coach. Thanks. Yep, I got to. I got to wrap him up. Three minutes is up, Coach. Good. We went All right. Hey, thank you. We went 3:30.